Broadcasting live from the Newsmax studio in New York City, here is Steve Malzberg. All right, folks, it's the Malzberg panel part two, and uh, we're rejoined by, uh, <laughs> yeah, anything is possible here, by Ron Christie, <laughs> a former special assistant to George W. Bush, also, of course, uh, uh, top aide to former, uh, former Vice President Dick Cheney, and Rick Unger, the host of Steel and Unger on Sirius XM Radio. All right, so Hillary claimed uh, that um, in an interview that uh, uh, she was broke. The Clintons were broke when uh, they left the White House. Now, they did have a large amount of debt, but she went on to talk about, you know, mortgages and Chelsea's education and how hard everything was. Uh, they had already had a, an $8 million advance or so from a book deal that was in the bank. They knew they'd have speaking fees. They, they weren't in the situation that the, per, the working stiff who says I'm broke and has to buy a, has pay a mortgage and go to college, have a kid go to college is in. And now she's backtracking it a little. But I think, um, uh, Ron, that that's going to be another thing for Republicans to jump on and save and put in the bank, so to speak, no pun intended, that Hillary claimed they were broke. Well, if we have any sense, if she decides to run, we will. But uh, some of the folks who run communications in the Republican Party are a little lacking in their creativity. Oh, poor Hillary Clinton. Oh, and these terrible legal bills. Oh, where do the legal bills come from, Steve? Would it be her philandering husband who, of course, got disbarred from the Arkansas bar because, of course, he lied under oath? I mean, with the Clintons, it's always about them, but they never actually get to the matter of the crux of the matter. The crux of the matter is this. They have decided to put themselves through their actions in that situation and to try to get the American people to feel sorry for them as they left public housing, which they've lived in for their entire professional career, is, I think, a little bit insulting. Governor's Mansion, White House, Rick? <laughs> well, as it happens, Bill Clinton's not running. I don't know if you heard. Uh, we don't even know if Bill Clinton's wife is running, but we know that he's not, so I'm not sure why he's the issue in terms of disbarment. Look, you know, I mean, Ron, Ron spent a lot of years working at the White House in public service, and I'm pretty sure he didn't leave with a big bankroll. You don't get paid a lot. You just put a lot of time in, you work very hard, and then you got to come out and start to make some money. Do I agree that Hillary probably did not want to use plural when discussing houses? Yeah, that was not the best line and uh, I'm sure it's the first of many faux pas to come from everybody right, running for president. Now I want you bo both and everybody out there to watch this uh, Hillary claiming sexism uh, from Obama's campaign. Watch. Beginning the process of working with then Senator Obama after I ended my campaign, uh, we had, as I describe in the book, uh, an awkward but necessary meeting to clear the air on a couple of issues. And one of them was the uh, sexism that right. unfortunately was present in that 08 campaign. Well, well, if it was present in 08, Ron, it better not be present from those evil Republicans in 016. <laughs> That's right. You know, let's see if we can get some more binders full of women, uh, as Governor Romney must uh, but, but go said. figure, Obama's campaign was sexist. Yeah, but this is actually no, not a revelation. I'm actually surprised that she came out and said this, Steve. The Obama White House has been tinged with this old boys network. Or the president doesn't surround himself with very senior women. You've had a number of books come out that have come out that have said this. So I'm actually surprised she did it. I think that's her clever way of trying to distance herself a little bit from the Obama White House. Interesting. What, do you, what about it? I think you guys are really hysterical. When, when it's something where you could compliment Hillary for standing up to that and defending Sarah Palin because she wouldn't attack her just because she was a woman, you switch the conversation no, no, to the negative that. of Obama. L that. Let me hear you guys say that Hillary did the right thing by, by revolting against the sexism and standing up for Sarah Palin. I want well, to hear you Well, she claims say that she was asked to trash and Sarah Palin no. before she knew who she right. was and she didn't do it. Well, she didn't have, first of all, if that's true, bravo. But she didn't have to do it because the rest of the media went and did it for her and sort of the National Organization We're of Women who said she might as well media. be a white male. We're Thank talking you. about Hillary. We're not talking yeah, but about I don't, the rest I don't of know if it's true. Why should I believe that it's true? Because Hillary oh, said it? Because Hillary said it. Therefore, it can't possibly be no, true. No, if Obama said it, it would definitely not be true. But Hillary, you don't, you don't, you don't really know yet. It, you it, guys, I keep telling you, this, <laughs> this does not sell anybody in the audience. They kind of figure that Hillary's probably telling the truth about that. Why? Because it gives you a chance but, to but criticize she, oh, Obama. But, but the Palin issue is not what I'm talking about. I purposely didn't bring that up right now. I'm bringing up that she's crying that Obama's campaign was sexist. That's yeah. exactly and right. Not, she, not just because they asked her or someone asked her to trash Palin, well, but because of running against her, they were sexist. 
I think that's what they were talking about was the whole trashing Palin. So you have a choice here. You can either criticize Obama for being sexist and support Hillary's decision not to go along with it, or vice versa. No, but I, you kind of no, can't no. have it both ways. Well, guys, I, 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 I heard the interview. I disagree. I think there were two separate issues. That 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 request, supposed request to trash Palin, was separate than uh, Obama being running a sexist that wasn't campaign. Sex, I'm asking. Her anyway, to okay, yeah. Rick Unger and Ron Christie. Great to see both of you. We'll see you again later. Thank you very, very much uh, for being here, both of you. All right, folks, and the Steve Molesberg Show, of course, will, of course, continue. Uh, but first, uh, you know, we like to take a look back in history, and now the history of flight from the Wright brothers to the shuttle. So don't you miss that one. Don't go away. Five thirty-five years ago, fly the Atlantic. Here she is, safe and sound, having just completed the first flight by a woman across the Atlantic. Why choose this as our goal? And they may well ask, why climb the highest mountain? We choose to go to the moon. And I will ride. Into the fire. That's one small step for man. Rise above the flames. One giant leap for man. I will climb like a phoenix and rise. The crew of the space shuttle Challenger slipped the surly bonds of Earth to touch the face of God. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. We've only just begun. We're still pioneers. <laughs>